The iodine clock reaction is a very famous reaction and very spectacular. A colourless solution suddenly, without apparently anything happening, turns very dark blue. Sometimes it even looks black. Boom, there it is. It looks like magic. When my children were younger, I used to use this at magic shows at their parties, pretending I was a conjurer. They would say the magic word and bang, the solution would change colour. And they were really impressed. Did you used to do lots of chemical reactions at your children's birthday parties? Yes, I, I, I used to do chemical conjuring for every party. And um, nowadays, it wouldn't really be allowed with safety laws. We had liquid nitrogen and all sorts of things. <laughs> you have to understand that this is quite complicated, but it's not difficult. There's several different reactions going on at once, and that's why you get the effect. At the heart of the reaction, the blue colour is caused by triiodide, that is three iodine atoms with a negative charge, I3 minus is interacting with starch. So in the solution, there's some starch. And if you have I3 minus, then it interacts, and even a low concentration will give you a very intense colour. In order to have I3 minus in your solution, you have to have both I2 iodine and iodide, which is I minus, that is one iodine atom with an electron. And these can interact together to form I3 minus. So if you have I3 minus in the solution, you get the colour. Now, there are different ways you can do the clock reaction, and the way that we've done it is the so called iodate way IO3 minus plus bisulfite HSO3 minus. They react together so that the iodate turns into iodide. However, as soon as you have the iodide in solution, some of the iodate that is left reacts with the iodide to make iodine. So in the solution, you have iodine and iodide, which should make the starch go blue. But before it can go blue, the bisulfite converts it back to iodide. So in the solution, in effect, you have iodate being turned into iodide and you're using up the bisulfite. And this goes on with these different reactions. And then you arrange the concentration so the bisulfite runs out before the iodate. And as soon as it runs out, the iodate convert some of the iodide to iodine, you form I3 minus, and it goes blue. The beauty of this reaction is that you can manipulate the concentrations of the iodate, the bisulfite, so that re the reaction takes place after a given time. So you can precisely say, I want it to go after two seconds, 10 seconds, or whatever. And really professional chemical conjurers have a whole row of beakers with different concentrations, and they flick their fingers as they go along, and that one after another, the beakers change color. The sensitivity of this reaction to concentration is something that you don't normally see. But We've been lucky enough to be able to video this with a very high-speed camera so that what looks to the eye as a single change of colour that goes so fast you don't see it changing, one moment it's colourless, the next moment it's dark blue, can be, you can watch how the colour develops. Oh, my days are so gone! <laughs> oh, that's so 
And the thing that I think is really interesting is that if you watch, these colored spots appear in different places in the solution and gradually spread out and merge into one. It is not as if the reaction starts in one place and then spreads across the beaker. And the reason for this is that when we pour the solutions together, the mixing is not perfect. So you have slightly high con higher concentrations in one place than you do in another. And the, these tiny differences in concentration are reflected in where the colour comes first. And I think the lesson from this is that using a high-speed camera and watching the reaction in slow motion, even somebody like me who's seen the iodine clock reaction hundreds of times can learn new things about it. You can see how things are, occur are occurring in quite a different way. And we're hoping to show you all sorts of different reactions, explosions, all sorts of things in slow motion. And then I hope we're going to learn lots of new things.